let me let me go to this uh, uh, list of questions and let me see if I can get everybody as uh, questions who was asked. So Zach asked a question, which was it was some time ago um, about uh, I think it was your mum who'd had a stroke. Zach was it, and the care they got. Look, I, I know this is a really important part of the NHS. It goes to this point about an NHS that has proper services in the community because. I think my sense is that NHS immediate stroke care is actually very good, but it's getting the follow-up care afterwards that is the real challenge. And you know, there's, no, there's no kind of advantage in having an NHS which only has good acute services and doesn't have those good services in the community. So look, my answer to you is it's, it, it's absolutely part of our plans because it's about an NHS that has decent community services as well as decent acute services uh, as well. I think the same goes to, I think it's Natalie's question about uh, mental health. Mental health is the Cinderella service. We've got to raise the amount of uh, the NHS budget spent on mental health. And by the way, and I suspect there will be lots of, sort of doctors and medical staff here who are not in mental health who would sympathise with this. Uh, my, my sense about this is that lots of people who present with physical conditions also have mental health issues, and that actually we could do a lot better by the way we spend money in the NHS if doctors were trained not just to spot physical symptoms but mental health symptoms uh, as well and deal with those mental health symptoms. Vivian, look, nobody gets everything right when it comes to being in government. And j just on PFI, I, I genuinely think this is a dilemma because we heard earlier from, I think it was Matt, about his experience in relation to uh, his wife's or partner's um, uh, giving birth to Toby. And you see, my two sons were born in a PFI hospital in London, UCH, and the old hospital was appalling and the new hospital is actually a big improvement. But look, I totally recognise the problem of the burden of PFI costs, uh, current costs, on lots of people. Now, the question is how much of that is about the way it was done as well as whether it was done. And I think you've got to get the, you know, you've got to get the arrangements right if, uh, if you're going to go down um, uh, uh, that road. Uh, I think it was the, the question that was asked, Francesca, was it? Yeah, uh, about... Uh, about staffing ratios. My sense about this is, and again, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, the Francis report into Mid-Staffordshire looked at the issue of benchmarks and staffing ratios. And look, when I say that half of nurses are saying wards are dangerously understaffed, it's that those ratios aren't being met. And look, my answer to you is they've got to be met in the right way, not the wrong way. If it's supposed to be that it's, if, if what is seen as medically safe is one in eight with student nurses as supernumerary, then that's the benchmark that should be met. So you've got to have the right benchmark in place and they've got to be clinically led. Uh, and that's surely got to be what patients would want uh, and uh, what we would want. Uh, Amy, I accepted your invitation and as I say, uh, lots, of, uh, uh, lots of witnesses. Uh, Maria's question about disability uh, is an important question. And um, look, the thing I would say is that it is about recognizing the rights of disabled people in our country and equality for disabled people. And that is an incredibly important principle to me. That is an incredibly important principle for the future. I'll just give you one example. We're going to abolish the bedroom tax. Why? Because I think it's one of the most... <laughs> it is one of the most sort of terrible things that this government um, uh, has done uh, in terms of uh, disabled people. So it's just a sign of our... Uh, commitment. The question that was asked about are we going to sustain NHS uh, uh, professionals, I think it is a really, really important uh, uh, question and the answer is yes. And look, we've also shown how we can protect neighbourhood policing. I mean, I, I think these services, these public services do go together and I don't think you can, if you like, sort of devalue one public service at the expense of another. So, so it is about protecting those vital, um, uh, those vital public services. Uh, now, I'm looking, slightly losing track of my notes. The questions here were about health visitors, that's right. So, um, absolutely health visitors are part of our plans. I think you mentioned children's centres, which is part of what you interact with, is that right? I mean, one of the things that we want to do is have uh, children's centres making sure that they are kind of fulfilling their original function. I think children's centres are an incredibly important part of our community, and we've got to make sure that we 
uh, protect them for the future. We're going to protect the education budget and children's centres, short start centres are funded out of the early years budget, but we also want to value the role that health visitors play. And then on Helena's question about palliative care, we, we've announced plans around, where is Helena? Yeah, we've announced plans around end of life care and people being able to uh, die at home if that's what they choose. And I think that is a really important part of an NHS that properly works uh, for people. I'm wondering if I missed out anyone. Did I miss out anybody? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were asking about prevention. That's a really good point. Look, things like insulation, which is what you were referring to, and, you know, look, one of the things in our manifesto is taking on the energy companies, freezing energy bills, making sure that bills can be cut. That is absolutely part of a proper health. If you don't have decent housing, if people can't afford to heat their homes, if people can't afford to live, you end up with more ill health. I mean, it's a basic principle, and so prevention is absolutely crucial. Now, I'm going to take some friends, uh, questions from my media uh, folk and... Um, just one thing to say, you must hear them respectfully because they will, may ask me tough questions, but that is absolutely their job. I'm, I'm going to take uh, Carl, first of all. Thanks, Carl Dillon, ITV News. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, another speech that has been made today. Sir John Major has been speaking. He says if people vote Labour, they'll end up with a government which is propped up by the SNP, subject to a daily dose of political blackmail, and that that is a recipe for mayhem. Does Sir John Major have a point? No. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think it's a really important question, though, Carl, and let me answer it directly. Look, I, I'm the person standing up for the United Kingdom. I, I'm the person who yesterday called out the SNP on a manifesto uh, which didn't talk about a second referendum, but doesn't, they don't rule out the possibility of a second referendum uh, in the next five years. And then let's look at what is happening to the Conservative and Unionist Party, because that is the name of the Conservative Party, the official name of the Conservative Party. And look at what Michael Forsyth is saying. He was a minister in John Major's government. He was a Scottish secretary in John Major's government. He says, and I quote, that David Cameron's tactics are short-term and dangerous and threatening to the integrity of the United Kingdom. Now, why is Michael Forsyth right? Because David Cameron is setting one part of the United Kingdom against another. He's seeking to divide our country, and I think that is dangerous. He's talking up the SNP's chances, not taking them on, and I think that is dangerous. And also, the reality is that he now believes that his only route to success and getting back into power is the success of the Scottish National Party. Now, I want the Scottish National Party to fail. He wants them to succeed. And that is a big difference between us. And, and I just have to say to you, uh, and I have to say to Conservatives, frankly, I think they should tell the Prime Minister to stop because he's demeaning his office, he's demeaning himself, he's demeaning those people actually he sends out on his behalf, and frankly, I think it is threatening to the integrity of the United Kingdom. And I think there are right-thinking Conservatives right across the country who feel deeply queasy about what he is doing. And I think it says something about his campaign, because his has become a campaign where he will say anything and he will stop at nothing. And I don't think that's what people want in a prime minister. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. Uh, Jason Farrell, Sky News. I want to ask you about the crisis in the Mediterranean, people drowning, trying to reach European shores. Um, if you were going to the EU summit on Thursday as Prime Minister, what would you be saying? What would be your plan to stop this humanitarian crisis? I would be saying, Jason, that we've got to restart the search and rescue. And look, the search and rescue has ended in November. <laughs> the, 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 ser the search and rescue was ended, in, was ended in November. We said at the time it was a mistake, it was wrong. And I just want to deal very directly with this. Look, of course, the first responsibility lies with those people engaging in this dreadful trafficking of people, right? The, the, the people engaging in this people trafficking. And, and of course that's right. But, I mean, it's a bit like if somebody pushes somebody into, a, into the sea or into a pond, you know, we have a responsibility to rescue them. And so the first responsibility lies with them, but we have a responsibility ourselves. And I look, frankly, I think it is a stain on Europe to have these things happening on our shores and, uh, and in our waters. 
And so, look, what I will be saying at the European Council tomorrow is that we've got to act, and we've got to act on search and rescue, and that is about basic humanity.